here in this topic we are going to discuss about uh, the high output cardiac failure what is the meaning of high output cardiac failure here it is not that the failed heart is the one which is pumping high cardiac output but rather than previously normal heart for example if previously the heart is absolutely normal but the normal heart is pumping high amount of cardiac output maybe in various condition that eventually leads to the failing of the heart this is called as high output failure or high output cardiac failure so in this we are going to discuss about the definition as well as the pathogenesis of the high output failure over here so first let us see what is the high output failure over here definition high output failure is the type of heart failure in which the cardiac output is increased compared with the values of normal resting state causing the heart to overwork that is responsible for the development of heart failure this is called as high output heart failure so what is happening here there will be increase in the cardiac output so there will be an increase in the cardiac output is the main thing what you will see in the high output cardiac failure over here increase in the cardiac output means increase in the stroke volume and increase in the minute volume this is what we will see so what is the pathogenesis of the high output cardiac failure here as i already mentioned what is the pathogenesis the pathogenesis is there will be an increase in the stroke volume example we will see in like uh, hyperthyroidism in hyperthyroidism there will be an increase in the heart rate as well as there will be an increase in the force of contraction of the heart so there will be increase in the stroke volume as well as minute volume so there will be an overall increase in the cardiac output in the state of hyperthyroidism and other condition this is the first one and second condition may be there will be decrease in the blood viscosity so blood viscosity decreases right so whenever the blood viscosity decreases the velocity of the blood flow increases so whenever the blood velocity decreases uh, whenever the blood viscosity decreases and velocity increases automatically remember that there will be a decrease in the peripheral vascular resistance so decrease in the blood viscosity leads to decrease in the pvr peripheral vascular resistance in the arterioles because we know that arterioles are called as resistant vessels so what arterioles will do it uh, creates a speed breaker kind of an action when the blood is moving at a faster velocities so whenever the velocity of the blood flow is much faster because of decrease in the viscosity of the blood what happens is there will be decrease in the peripheral vascular resistance which is exerted in the arterioles which increases venous return to the heart increases venous return decrease in the blood, blood viscosity leads to decrease in the peripheral vascular resistance leads to increase in the venous return to the heart the best example of this condition is severe anemia severe anemia as we can see uh, as we can see in sickle cell disease as you can see in sickle cell anemia in sickle cell anemia there will be decrease in the blood viscosity because uh, decrease in the number of rbcs causes decrease in the viscosity decrease in the viscosity causes decrease in the pvr and which causes increase in the venous return to the heart increase in the venous return to the heart causes increase in the end diastolic volume increase in the stroke volume all these things we will see whenever there is a decrease in the blood viscosity and another important point is vaso dilation of the peripheral vascular resistant arterioles so p v r arterioles undergoes dilation 
So, so there will be vasodilation of PVR, peripheral vascular resistant arterioles. So, remember one important point here, the vasodilation increases venous return to the heart. For example, whenever there is a vasodilation, remember that resistance decreases. It is like uh, if you take a dam, the dam is the one which actually creates resistance. So, immediately once you open the dam gates, there will be full flow of the water against uh, means uh, down the gradient because of you know the resistance has been removed. In the same way, whenever the vessels are dilated, automatically the resistance is dropped. When the resistance is dropped, automatically there will be a rush of the blood to the venules, to the veins and there will be an increase in the venous return because of the vasodilation of the peripheral vascular resistant arterioles. So, this also causes increase in venous return, increase in venous return and increase in the end diastolic volume and increase in the stroke volume. Okay. So, what are the important mechanism here? Till now, whatever the mechanisms we studied, increase in the stroke volume, conditions like hyperthyroidism, there will be decrease in the blood viscosity, example like severe anemia, the best example I also told in sickle cell anemia and there will be uh, vasodilation of the peripheral vascular resistant uh, arterioles which may see uh, these conditions may be in thiamine deficiency or early phase of endotoxic shock, these are the best examples. So, B1 deficiency as well as early phase of endotoxic shock, these are the best examples for this and the fourth one is the fistulas, arteriovenous fistulas. One important thing is arteriovenous uh, fistulas or the communication or we can say an abnormal communication or the bypass communication between artery as well as vein that bypass the microcirculation that is that bypass the arterioles that bypass the capillaries and that bypass the venules. For example, if you see this is the artery and this is the vein. So, the abnormal connection from artery to the vein is called as fistula. But what is the normal anatomy after the artery, arterioles? After the arterioles, there will be uh, microcirculation called as capillaries, right? After that, venules, after that, veins, right? This is how the normal anatomy means normal blood flow through the vascular system will be flown. But if there is a direct communication between artery to the vein, what happens? There will be more blood is diverted to the vein. So, there will be increase in the venous return once again. So, whenever there is a arteriovenous communications that bypass the microcirculation that is arterioles, capillaries and venules causing an increased venous return to the heart ultimately leading to increase in work output that is increase in the cardiac output and eventually resulting in heart failure. Okay? So, all these can be seen. So, in what conditions generally we will see these kind of arteriovenous malformations examples like uh, the trauma from a knife uh, wound is the most common cause for the development of uh, an abnormal arteriovenous communications and sometimes we may also see such kind of communications uh, in surgical shunt for hemodialysis. So, in all these things we will see arteriovenous communication. So, all these are the four important uh, uh, pathological conditions responsible for the development of high output cardiac failure.